Bonjour, ici Micheline Globe du Club de lecture Affaires. Euh, il me fait très plaisir aujourd'hui de vous présenter un auteur britannique, M. Nigel Payne, qui va venir nous présenter son livre qui s'appelle The Learning Challenge. C'est un livre que j'ai lu, que j'ai beaucoup apprécié, même si je ne suis pas une professionnelle de la formation et du développement. Euh, je pense que vous allez vous réjouir de la rencontre avec M. Payne. Donc, sans plus tarder, je vais demander à M. Payne de se présenter et de parler de son livre. Welcome, Mr. Payne. Thank you so much for uh, having a few minutes to spare with us to talk about you and your book. Merci, Michel. C'est un grand plaisir, Micheline. Excellent. Alors, uh, for the people who don't know you, I would like you to tell us a bit about yourself. What do you do? Who are you? And what do you do? <laughs> what do I do? I work with organizations pretty much all around the world to help them deliver learning better, uh, be better at engaging their employees. Um, I help them with leadership to create better quality leadership in organizations and basically to make them be more effective. So I, I immodestly uh, like to think that I change lives and I change organizations. Um, I maybe do a bit of that. I, I think it's very important. And I also, as well as working with organizations, I write. Uh, clearly, I've written my book. I'm now working on a, a, bo a book on leadership. And I also teach. I work for the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia on a doctoral program. I teach on uh, a doctoral program for chief learning officers. And I teach for the uh, Chicago Booth Business School, the London campus of Chicago Booth. So I'm very, very busy. So I, I, I enjoy all of those aspects of my work. I enjoy working with organizations. I enjoy doing research and writing. And I enjoy teaching as well. And the mixture of those just depends on what happens during the year. It, it ebbs and flows around all three of those areas. Excellent. Uh, I invite the people who are watching this to go on your website, uh, which is nigelpain.com. Uh, Pain They'll find a series of references. They'll learn about your TV show. Uh, they'll also yes. be able to yes. watch a couple of excellent videos. Uh, where they'll discover, like I did myself, a very passionate person, a uh, person that's interested in the well-being of employees and the success of organizations. So that's what I discovered this weekend. Now, this Thanks. is your first book, Mr. Payne, uh, The Learning Challenge? No, no, it's not my first book. I've probably written about four or five books. Um, it's Ooh. the first one that is, um, I would say it's the first serious book in that it, it's, it's been published by a reputable publisher. Um, it was commissioned. Um, I had a deadline to deliver. I worked with an editor. So it was a serious book, I guess. It, it, and therefore, it's, to me, it holds um, a dearer place in my heart than, than all, all the other books, which have gone on, been written in different ways for different circumstances. Some are only e-books and others um, published books Excellent. and some both. So, so it's, it's, and so, well, I'm just going to say, since I've written this, I've also written a short e-book on neuroscience, okay. neuroscience for learning. So I'm, st I'm still keeping writing. Excellent. Um, the Learning Challenge, the name of the book, The Learning Challenge, Dealing with Technology, Innovation and Change in Learning and Development. Now, yes. I'm, I'm in front, as we, uh, as we are listening to this uh, during my event, we'll have about 40, 50 people who will want to know yeah. about this book. What is this book about? And what are the key takeaways for the people who are in learning development uh, when, when they're going to grab a copy and start reading it? What yeah. are the key takeaways in your view? Well, the, the, the presumption that underpins the book is that there is a huge amount of change going on in learning and development. And that I, I think it's increasingly important in, in the world of work. And that in some ways, most of the, the change that's going to happen in organizations is not going to be driven by technology. It's going to be driven by people. I also think that in the world that we live in, the VUCA world of volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity, learning becomes the only mode of survival. I, don't, I, I, I really cannot see any way forward for any organization, big or small, uh, complex service or manufacturing that doesn't have learning somewhere at its heart. So the role of the learning leader is going to change dramatically. And I wanted to produce a book that helped the learning leader in that transition 
And I wanted to share with learning leaders some of the big changes and big shifts that are occurring in the, the environment. So the first part of the book is about the world of work and how that's changing, because that's the context. And uh, I'm a great believer in context. Without context, everything is meaningless. That's the context. The second part looks at a number of major innovations, if you like, in learning and development, the way that, that learning design is changing, the way that 702010 is coming in, the way performance support is getting a bigger and bigger role, et cetera, et cetera. And then the third part is called game changers. And I, I think there are three critical game changers. They are technology and just the, the whole, since I've written the book, just the big emphasis at the moment on virtual reality, on intelligent software, all of these things w will make technology increasingly significant. The second game changer is neuroscience of learning. And the more we know about the brain, the more we know about learning and the, the, the more we learn about how to make learning more effective. So neuroscience is definitely going to be massive in the next 10 years. And I wanted to alert learning leaders to some of the, the critical trends in neuroscience. And then the third area is big data and big data. That, so all three of those, those, those game changers are really at the very beginning. The, the part two, the trends are well established. So I wanted to pin those down mm -hmm. and help people deal with them. And then I wanted to kind of excite them and get them ready and prepared for the game changers. I may not be relevant this year, but next year, the year after, it's going to get increasingly important. Excellent. And um, we had the chance to uh, chat a few moments before this interview, and you were mentioning an important point that, that you wrote the book, but it's not just your little ideas. It's a very well-documented book. Yes. Uh, you've got uh, references from the key uh, players in, in this field. Uh, you mentioned the 70 2010 with Mr. Jennings, who developed yes. that approach. Can yes. you tell us a little bit more about how you chose to do it this way and uh, obviously the value of having all of this documentation gathered into one uh, single document. Yes, um, I teach at the University of Pennsylvania which is a, an Ivy League university and if I produced a book that had no evidence behind it, it was just my personal opinion, they would they would murder me. They would be. They would. They would never let me through the doors of the university. So I. I felt a moral, a strong moral obligation to use evidence when I made a claim and to substantiate anything I said with a reference or a quote or whatever it was. And I think that is actually a very good policy for every learning leader. Think evidence. Think about evidence based. Don't just jump to assumptions. Don't just read someone's views and just grab them without any questioning, go back to your primary sources, check everything out. And I think uh, that evidence-based model is so firmly ingrained in my head, I couldn't do anything else. So everything I've said is either referenced or it's based around an interview. And, I, and the other point I wanted to, to make in the book is that there are plenty of people doing wonderful work around the world. And I wanted to show some of those great ideas, great case studies, um, great examples, and highlight some of the talented people that I've worked with. And also, they're pushing the boundaries for the, the industry, and I wanted to show how they were pushing the boundaries. And then the third part of the book was to be practically helpful, not theoretically interesting or academically sound, but I wanted it to be practically helpful. And that differentiates it from many books. You know, I, I say, think about these things. Look at this checklist. Take these two points into account. So there's stuff that people can grip onto and use the day after they finish reading it. I agree completely. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm not a professional in this area, but I, I did appreciate reading the book. It's well written. It's a very approachable book. As you Thank mentioned, you. it's a very well referenced, very practical. Uh, there's lots of food for thought. Um, there's a, um, the, 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 it's not a big book. It's not, no, uh, you know, it's, it's 180 big. some pages, well referenced. Yeah. Uh, you really have uh, put a level of language that it's uh, a lot of people can read this. And in your introduction, actually, you said, I wrote this book. Uh, if you are new to corporate learning, then this book will scope your work. 
Yes. If you are already there, it will fill in gaps and challenges and challenge your thoughts and assumptions. And I think you, you've succeeded in that way. I would Thank you. highly recommend this book to all learning professionals. And I would highly recommend that they buy a copy for their boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be very nice. <laughs> because I think there's lots of, uh, you see the future coming in full force yes. with yes. the impact of technology and yes. the need for the individual to uh, uh, to take his or her place in the organization and be valued for the contribution that they can make. And it's yes. a totally different way of seeing uh, the way we learn uh, from what I um, know of it, uh, which is quite little. Yeah. I like That's the link that you right. do with the learning and the business strategy that yes. it cannot be dissociated. That resonates yeah. with me as a marketing person. Yes. And I can see how big a challenge that will be for organizations to open yes. that door up. That will yes. be key. Yes, it, I guess that the, the overall, if I have to sum up in a sentence, that, then that sentence is that learning is no longer disengaged. It's no longer sitting in the corner. It's no longer independent, getting on and doing its little bit. Learning is center stage and therefore it is engaged, it's challenged, it is accountable, and it has to answer for how it spends its money. But I would, that's the world I would much rather be in. I don't want to be in the corner. I'd rather be center stage. And but with that comes responsibilities. Exactly, obviously. but it's fun. It's fun for people in that era, in that sector of activity, because they can see with a lot of enthusiasm how this uh, profession is going to be evolving, and how open they have to be to uh, reaching out to people in a different way, and also taking um, taking in the impact of technology. I mean, that's uh, the big that's thing. Exactly. Uh, that's exactly. Uh, it thing. is. Mm. It is, and mm -hmm. inescapable. All of the trends, I think, are inescapable. You can't, you can't say, well, we don't need technology, we don't need yeah. neuroscience, we don't yeah. need big data, we don't need 70, 20, 10. Oh, yes, you do. You need all of the elements of the book you need to address at some point. Maybe not all tomorrow, but you need to address okay. them. Perhaps one last question as the president of the book club. You did use a lot of reference to different books that seem to be so interesting. I've, I've yes. read quite a few, uh, uh, the, 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 the future um, oh, about happiness there I saw. I forget the name. Yes. The Company of the Future, Search Inside yes. Yourself, uh, yes. The Future of Management. There's many, many yes. interesting resources. Yes. What do you think is the future of books? <laughs> well, because you write them, people write I do. them, and I do. you know, in the seventy twenty ten, where do they fit in the equation? I, I hope that they will evolve to become part at least of the twenty, and yes. perhaps even in the seventy, uh, yes. if they become more interactive. So yes. I'd like to have your thoughts on that. Well, yeah, I, one of the things I do, I, I coach senior executives, and one of the questions I ask often is, "When did you last read a book?" And I get some very interesting answers, uh, often not for the last five years or six yeah. years or whatever. And one of the things I encourage people to do is read books. I think it's a very important that you should challenge your mind. And, and a book is not a tweet. A book is something where you have to sit and spend time. And I think that's a very useful, mindful discipline. It, it helps gather your thoughts. It helps you chill away, chill out of the, the, the immediate day to day. And I, I would be devastated in, in a world without books. I don't think books will disappear. They may be more and more electronic and I don't, I don't worry about that. I've got about 150 or 200 books on my iPad. So that's my library that I carry around with me. And thank goodness, I used to carry books around and I'd never, I'd never pick the right ones. I'd, I'd arrive with six books that weighed a huge amount and they were the six I didn't need and it was six that I were in my library. So I, I carry books around. But I also have the, a, a great physical pleasure from reading um, books that are, you can feel and touch. Yeah. So uh, books, books store knowledge. I think there's an evolution of the, um, the electronic book. The e-book is in a very juvenile state at the moment. I think it will become much more interactive, um, much more able to record the way in which we read as well as what we read, uh, very easy to drill down through it. So ebooks will take on a life of their own. But I am a great believer in 
physical books, and I can't believe they will ever disappear. Uh, they, they may become more precious, and not everything will end up on paper, but I can't believe that, that nothing will ever end up on paper. So books, books are important because they're long form. That's the great thing about a book, is you, you cannot read a book in five minutes. And that in itself, in the world that we live in, is a very salutary point. Certain, certain knowledge is deep and profound and takes time. And that's not a bad lesson for anybody. Good. Thank you so much, Mr. Payne, for your time. Uh, I hope that I can generate lots of interest for your book. It's a very fine book, well written, very approachable. Uh, anybody really at all levels in the organizations can benefit from learning this book. Uh, I love that you put so many excellent references. I wish you great success with it. And I hope to see you in Canada with it someday. Who knows? Yes, Michelin and I hope to be in Canada as well. I certainly would love to meet you in person and uh, I'd like to spend more time in Canada. Canada is a very nice country. I've spent many, many happy days of my life in Canada. Great. I'd like to do that again. Thank à bientôt. You. So we'll keep in touch à then. Bientôt. Thank you à very bientôt. much. Merci bien.